So uh, this brings us to uh, Cyril's Chinese room experiment. And uh, probably most of the people here are already familiar with, the, with this experiment. But essentially, it's an idea of having you know, a guy in a room with a list of uh, rules, uh, essentially, uh, that serve to translate between Chinese and English. And he's given a set of questions and in one language, and he uh, uses this list of rules to provide answers in a second language. And uh, Cyril's argument is that you know, this person does not understand Chinese. Uh, you know, the system's reply to Cyril's argument is that, OK, the, the, you know, the guy in the room does not understand Chinese, but the system as a whole understands Chinese. And this is something that we actually don't agree with um, in terms of you know, deep understanding or general understanding, at least. So there are a number of problems with uh, Searle's argument, as we see it. So um, his scenario would require an enormous number of, of, of rules. And this raises the question of whether the scenario is really realistic, even as a you know, theoretical construct. Uh, would it work well? And uh, he focuses on this one very specific domain, but if we were to try to create an agent that would be working in the real world, could it model reality as a list of binary if-then rules? How would that really work on a computer? Um, it doesn't seem like that would be really possible to, uh, to create. And um, you know, again, this is something that's very domain specific. So Searle is attempting to argue against strong AI with a scenario that is very um, domain specific to this one, one particular task. Um, and you know, intelligence as we see it would not emerge through this type of thing, something working with just lists of rules and um, essentially what's an enormous lookup table would not produce intelligence, would not produce understanding. Um, but what we do see as being necessary is the ability to generalize and also the ability to produce new rules over time through experience, uh, through observation and experimentation. And I'll get into further detail in a moment about, um, we feel Searle does not refute strong AI with his argumentation. So uh, one important process here that you don't really see in this scenario is grounding. There's no way for you know, the man in the Chinese room or the, the system itself to verify its knowledge. And in this way, it has no ability to ground its knowledge. Uh, so in that sense, this type of knowledge can't really be used for the purposes of guiding meaningful action. If it can't be tested, if it can't be verified, um, there's a very limited, limited uh, utility to it, uh, as we see it. So um, another thing that Searle discusses at length in this paper is the concept of intentionality. Uh, you know, he argues uh, uh, against, um, you know, largely against the idea of intentionality being possible in machines, but we feel that this would be possible if there's grounding. Um, and you know, another uh, issue with his argument, as you see in the last point here, is that uh, Sorrow really presents a scenario that um, encapsulates weak or narrow AI. You know, it's very domain specific, you can only do one, one particular thing. Um, it can't really learn, uh, it can't generalize, it can't verify its knowledge. And uh, in this sense, it's, you know, in my view, kind of a, a straw man argument as he presents weak AI, uh, refutes it, and then use that, uses that as uh, a way to try to refute strong AI, which is really what he says he's arguing against in his paper. So in terms, uh, moving on to what uh, we believe is important for understanding, there are a number of mechanisms that we think would be uh, a necess necessary for understanding to exist within an agent. So one is modeling causal relations. I know we've mentioned this uh, a few times, but uh, like in the example Chris mentioned, 
you'll end up with um, just insane predictions if you don't have an ability to model causality. If it's just uh, statistical modeling or you know, correlational, like with, with a regression model, you can come up with something that appears to predict some outcome very well, but without that element of causality, it's just, it could be anything. It could make no sense at all. Um, it could have no real basis in reality. Um, also, um, being able to separate between relevant and irrelevant factors is very important. Being able to sort through everything that's uh, not useful to hone in on things that, that are useful uh, when you know, behaving in the real world. And also, again, going back to our theory of understanding, the creation of models that can be used in these particular uh, important ways. So again, you know, grounding is being very important in respect with respect to understanding that models that are created by an agent um, can't really be static in order to be optimally useful. They need to be able to change and evolve. You know, the environment changes and evolves. Uh, so these models must be able to adapt to the changing environment and as new information and new knowledge is uh, coming into the agent. Um, so, your, you know, essential conclusion here is that we don't really see anything in Searle's argumentation that uh, convincing, convincingly uh, provides a case uh, that general understanding or intelligence is not possible in machines. Um, you know, in terms of model building, we don't think there's any one specific way that's necessary, that there are probably a uh, you know, very large number of approaches that would work um, relatively equally well in terms of AGI, so long as they capture causal uh, relational properties, you know, models that uh, capture these relations between um, different things, so such that understanding can be achieved. Um, and um, this also builds on some of the items that we were speaking about yesterday, that uh, to have AGI, you need understanding, and this is necessary to acquire and hone knowledge autonomously, uh, to make autonomous decisions about improving that knowledge. That's something that's uh, really important also that, um, you know, when, when we have a problem that we're trying to solve, one thing that, one really important process is being able to identify what you don't know, but that you need to know to solve that problem. So that would seem to be a very uh, necessary ability in any agent that we're trying to build that, that has understanding and has intelligence. So again, just um, going through the elements that we think are important in order to create an agent that has this general or true understanding. And essentially, we see a lot of steps in the right direction, but uh, this type, these types of processes, especially on a human level, are uh, we don't really see yet in the field of AGI. So just to wrap things up, um, you know, we see a very large gap in the literature that understanding has not really been written about or discussed very uh, commonly at all. Hopefully this uh, workshop will help to, to change that. And uh, in terms of Searle's argumentation, uh, it doesn't really touch upon systems that can model causality. That's really one, one major key point here. Again, we see the limitations in uh, systems that have been built so far that focus on common sense knowledge or reasoning. Um, and we see a lot of limitations and, and issues with these types of systems, even after you know, decades of development. Okay. Uh, 
So again, just going back to why understanding is important. Uh, if we don't have any under any conceptualization of understanding, we won't be able to investigate it. Uh, we won't be able to compare different systems. So how can you test whether your system understands anything or how can you compare two systems uh, with respect to understanding and then to you know, test it, have a you know, conceptualization of it, but also have a way to test it discreetly. And um, if you want to try to build a system with this as a particular goal, which I think would be the goal of anyone working in AGI, we need to talk about understanding and you know, define it and come up with uh, new ways to test it. Okay. Thanks very much.